I always tell people the worst heckler is a woman. It's not a man. A man, you go, dude, well, you know, whatever, da, da, da. And the guy goes, okay, dude, all right, sorry, man, fuck. <laughs> but if a woman, it's like, a drunk woman especially, is like, no, I got something else to say. Shut up, Bob. Fuck you. Listen. <laughs> they just dig in. They just dig in. They just double down, triple down, quadruple down. Hey guys, it's Andrew, and this is a guest, and today we have a special guest. We have John Bush, comedian, who is performing here at the Comedy Loft in Lincoln, Nebraska, and he has uh, accepted an invitation to do an interview with us, and so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Mr. John? I'm a comedian. I've been doing it since uh, 1990. I've been doing stand-up comedy. Uh, started in the Twin Cities metro area, uh, and then... Spent uh, 1996 to 2002 in the New York comedy scene, and then I uh, and now I live in Des Moines, Iowa. So my career has been kind of a weird arc. So over since you started your first act as a comedian or set, how often have you changed it? Do you still say some of the things you said when you originally were a comedian? So I had a bit right now about that. We, my wife and I went to a gender reveal party, and and um, and the people at the gender reveal party. When they found out what sex the baby they were having, they didn't seem really that excited about it. And on the way home, I said to my wife, what's going on there? And she was like, well, this is their second one. They had two parties because not everybody could come to each. So they faked their reaction to that. So that's like, for me, when I, I'm in the car going, that's so lame. And then I'm going, wait, no, that's beautiful. That's a bit. Write it down. Put it on stage. So, you know what I mean? So that's like a new story that happened to my wife and I that I've now incorporated into my show. So there's always something new moving in. So my whole thing is, you know, it's 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 an evolving piece. It's not like this year I have a new hour. Character that I sometimes do on Instagram named Natan. And Natan is N-A-T-H-A-N is the way it's spelled, like Nathan. And I I was always searching for uh, I, I was that how that happened was I was in Colorado skiing with, and my girlfriend and I were skiing, and this photographer came up and took our picture on the ski slope. And at that time, it was like, you know, you could buy the picture at the bottom of the hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're like, okay, maybe we'll stop by and get that picture. And I said, thanks, Nathan, because he had a name tag on it. He goes, it's Natan. See you later. <laughs> and we both always remembered how hilarious it was that there was this guy with the spelling Nathan who pronounced it Natan. I was like, no, it isn't. It's Nathan. And you've decided now that you're out in Colorado getting high as the photographer that you're going to be Natan because it probably gets laid more. So, right. So now I have a So I was looking for this character, this this mm -hmm. this, this um do a DIY guy who's really bad at DIY, and I was looking for a name for him. And I went, oh, so it was like from 10 years ago, I grabbed this. Mm -hmm. My dad used to have in the workshop, he had like a, a, a bucket of bolts and gadgets and stuff that he found that he would throw away because he'd be like, someday I'll need that. And if he couldn't find a nut for something, he'd go into that thing and, ah, got it, right? That's what it's like. I collect. So that story is... The only true part of the Natan character is that what I grabbed that from this for real life story, but I have a few things in my act that I've taken this and put it over here like yeah. that. And so someone goes, is that true? I go, well, kind of. I've mixed, I mixed a couple things. Yeah. And, but I mean, I have to, I drink a lot, so I, I had really have to make sure I really write things down good because I'll be like, mustard and Daphne? I had no idea. <laughs> Damn it. Honey, what was mustard and Daphne? I don't know. Who's Daphne? <laughs> you know? Um, so it's like, yeah, you have to be pretty specific. Yeah, I would deal with hecklers a lot. What What do you think would be the most memorable time? I always tell people the worst heckler is a woman. It's not a man. A man, you go, dude, well, you know, whatever, da, da, da. And the guy goes, okay, dude, all right, sorry, man, fuck. <laughs> but if a woman, it's like a drunk woman especially, is like, no, I got something else to say. Shut up, Bob. Fuck you. Listen. <laughs> they just dig in. They just dig in. They just double down, triple down, quadruple down. But I had one the other night where a woman called me bald. Um, she said Mr. Clean or something like that. Mr. Clean, she kept on saying it during the beginning of my set. And, and, and she was being loud and it was interrupted, you know. And I don't remember what it was, but man, you need to cross your legs because I'm seeing that you're not Mr. Clean down there. And the crowd just it was like, it was like, just, it was like, it's funny because sometimes when you're, when you're dealing with people, like it, it, it's like all of a sudden the, the, the bullet moves into the chamber, like shikagaga. You know, it's just like, it was just lock and load fire. It was like, 
if you could give advice to up and coming comedians since you've been doing it for so long, yeah. what do you think the best advice you Best give? advice for being right now, because I've noticed it in every open mic I go to, is you have no clean material. What are you doing? You have no clean material. There's nothing you can do with dirty material really on your way up. Okay, so 1% of 1% be becomes famous. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna do this for a living, you're gonna have to be clean. If you're gonna have to do gigs and be clean. I am not a famous comedian. I'm a comedian. I'm comedy night. I always tell people, I'm comedy night. People are gonna go see the show because they're comedy night, they're having a comedian. Or I perform corporate events, which has been the main thing I do, for people who had no choice in their entertainment. They're like, okay, we're going to the company party. Yeah, I guess they're gonna have a comedian there. And then I my job is to overcome that reality. So my thing is, is that if you're gonna if you're gonna try to make a living doing stand-up comedy, most likely you're not gonna be famous. So B, you better have clean stuff. So I always tell young comedians, if you need to keep writing dirty, fine. Write a clean one for every dirty one you have, and write a clean version. So like I do a joke in my act where I, I'm up at, I'm up camping um, in the Boundary Waters with my buddies, and and uh, we're just the guys up there, and there's a loon out in the lake. The loon makes its noise, and I do it too. I'm like, ah, and I make the noise, and my friend goes, stop it. You're interfering with your ability to mate. And I'm like, so I just cock block really. <laughs> and, then, and then it goes on to say, so I do it again and I go on to say, if I'm not going to lay it up there, nobody's going to lay it up. Okay, clean version. Clean version. You couch it in the Judeo-Christian epic for all the people there. You make it you make it slightly naughty, but still it's marriage and all that. So I say, so that I say, when, when I do, when I say, um, I make them, so he goes, stop it, don't do that. And I go, Whoa, and I do it again. Because if I'm not hooking up up there, nobody's hooking up up there. So all of a sudden it's like, just hooking up. It doesn't say sex. I take cock block out of there. Mm -hmm. That's a clean version for a corporate. There's another thing I do about a figure skater pose. I do a figure skater pose. Like, <sighs> I do this joke about that. And in and, and, and club, I say, after sex with my wife. Right? <laughs> I, in a corporate, I say, after romance with my bride. So all the women are like, romance. It's marriage and romance. They still have romance. And now everybody's clean. Mm -hmm. So you just have to, you have to like negotiate that. Because clean is not just sex and drugs or swearing. Clean is, don't have any, you know, you're doing, I did a benefit for a hospice thing recently and I have a couple jokes in my act that mention cancer and death. Those are gone. Get them out, you know? So it's like that. It's Clean is so much more than just. So if I were to put chicken, milk and chicken together, would that make it a cereal or a soup? That would make it a soup. Why? Cheerios because there's and also cold, there's also cold soup, right? There's vicious soie, right? There's cold soup. So in Fruit Loops and chicken broth would make it cereal? I think that would make it soup because if it was chicken broth would probably be warm or I, I would say, yeah, that'd be weird if you put those in there, but you know. Okay, what about what about a hot dog is a sandwich? I would say a hot dog is a sandwich more than uh, Fruit Loops and milk is a soup. Okay. Yeah, I would say that I would say meat because it's meat and it's between buns. Do you um, have any social media people can follow you on? No. Well, follow me on Instagram. I've been trying to get better about doing my, my videos, but uh, I try to do funny videos on Instagram a lot. And Facebook is just going to be me plugging my shows and then also get, getting pissed off about Trump. So uh, <laughs> if, you are, if you're cool with that, fine. But don't become a friend of mine once I've said this and get on there and be a dick. Because okay? <laughs> I've been very clear about my, that. Yeah. All right, People well, get on there and they become friends of mine and then they just like just snipe at my shit. I'm like, dude. Go put your own post up. I don't know. Yeah. Facebook, it's a love hate relationship, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's oh my God. Facebook takes your data and gives it to another country. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Say goodbye to John, and we'll see you guys next time. We are a guest. Thank you.